I love Christmas time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And that's the only part of the song I know, but I think it's a fun song. And I love Christmas. How many of you say this is your favorite time of the year? Raise your hand. Real high. Real high. Awesome. You know, uh, I, there's only one thing I don't like about this time of year. And being from Clearwater, Florida, you can probably guess what thing that is. <laughs> it gets cold, right? It gets cold. But I love all the other things about Christmas. Just, just for tonight, give me one thing from this, from this side of the, the sanctuary. What do you all like about Christmas time? Yell it out. Say again. Presents. Who likes presents? Raise your hand. Presents. Awesome. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to give you one more shot because every mom and dad just saw no boys and girls' hands go up. That means we can take all that stuff back and get our money back, right? <laughs> How many like presents? Raise your hand. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Somebody from this section, what do you all like about Christmas? Music. Oh, yes, music. The choir, I didn't get to hear the choir yet. I'm going to watch it tonight, but I heard the choir did phenomenal this morning. I can't wait to hear it. Music is awesome. Somebody from the middle section here. Food. There's nothing that beats this time of year. Food. From Thanksgiving to Christmas is a guaranteed 20, right? All right, but it's so good. Somebody from this section, what do you like about Christmas? The lights. Ed, go ahead and put that out. I love Christmas lights. We start driving around as soon as we're able to, and we will look at seven lights if we have to until it gets to 7,000. We love Christmas lights in our family. We love driving around and looking at Christmas lights. Someone in this section. Family time. family time. All right. We tend to get a little bit more time with our family. You know, here's another thing that I like about Christmas time this year, the movie It's a Wonderful Life. It's one of my, not just my favorite Christmas movie, it's my favorite movie of all time. I love this movie. This is a great movie. I like watching it. And, uh, you know, my kids are getting older, and, and, and I don't necessarily see this face too often anymore, but the faces on kids when they wake up Christmas morning, and they're awed by what they see in the living room. You know, the lights on the tree, and, and, and outside in Florida, there was no snow, but we've, had, we've woken up to some snow when we've lived in other places, and and tell you, Christmas time and what you see on their, the, your kids' faces, what an incredible, incredible experience. Now, none of these things are wrong. And in and of themselves, they are a lot of fun. However, I believe the commercialization of Christmas, coupled with the direct assault on the historical and biblical meaning of Christmas, has caused families, maybe even believing families, to lose their awe and their wonder of Christmas. I hope we never do that, and, and I want to give you a spoiler right now. I, I, we could just give you this sentence and have Pastor coming up here and close us out. But can I tell you this, that the, the wonder of Christmas is this. It's the fact that God kept his promise to a lost and dying world and sent his only son, Jesus, into the world through the incarnation. What an incredible way to describe how Jesus came into the world, through the virgin birth. And that's important, by the way, because without Jesus being born of a virgin we would have no hope of our sins to be forgiven. That's the wonder of Christmas. That baby that was born in a manger was the fulfillment of so many promises that God had given to us. And that is something none of us should ever take for granted. And as Christian families, we more than anyone else should never lose the wonder of Christmas. So tonight, from two very familiar passages of Scripture, I want us to look briefly at some reminders about the wonders of Christmas. And from these verses, I want to draw four actions that our families should actively engage in to display the wonder of Christmas to the lost world around us. Because I'm telling you, if we as believers who claim the name of Jesus Christ aren't in awe of Christmas, and the real reason for Christmas, the lost people in our families, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods will never know why they should be in awe of Christmas either. So let's look at four specific actions tonight uh, from two familiar passages of Scripture. First, I want you to turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9. Now, we don't have the time uh, to dig into this and, and break down every one of, of the names that we're going to talk about, but I just want to give you a truth point, if you will, from all of the different names of the promised Messiah that come from Isaiah tonight and tell you what a difference that that makes. Because understanding the wonder 
of Christmas is one of the first actions that we can do. And we should spend time in our homes telling our kids about who Jesus is, telling our families, telling our friends, who is this Jesus? Who is this child? Well, let's begin in verse number 1 of chapter 9. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Now listen to verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men and rejoice when they divide spoil, divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Listen to this. Six, seven are incredible verses. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Can I tell you uh, what the scriptures have to say about this child that we should be in awe of? He is the great light, according to verse 2. In verse 6, he tells us he is wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And in verse 7, he tells us he is the eternal king. Now, we could take a lot of time and talk about what that means, but I just want to tell you what that means to you tonight. Maybe you came into this sanctuary, and Christmas this year is a little down for you. Christmas this year feels a little less hopeful than it has in the past. Maybe you're watching, and you know nothing about this child that we should be in awe of. Can I tell you what these names of this promised child mean for you and for me? It means that he can pierce our darkness. It means that there is no one like him. It means that he is never wrong. Every choice that he makes for us is always good. There is no situation that you face tonight or that you're in that is too difficult for him. He is forever compassionate. He is the author and sustainer of peace. And his plan, the plan of redemption, gives us a present hope and it gives us an eternal hope. Here's the truth I want you to draw tonight from this first idea of understanding the wonder. And it's this, that the wonder of Christmas begins with a biblical understanding of Jesus. The wonder of of Christmas begins with a biblical understanding of Jesus. There is no way for you to be in awe of Christmas like the Bible instructs us to be unless you know Jesus the way the Bible teaches us of him. So let's move to the second action. If the first action is to understand the wonder, then the second action is to experience the wonder. And we find ourselves now turning over to Luke chapter 2, the passage of Scripture that we know as the Christmas story. How many of you read this in your homes uh, on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Uh, We do as well uh, because we want to keep Jesus as the focus of Christmas. And we we don't want to just understand what the Bible says about him, although that's important. But we want to experience the wonder of Jesus. And we read in verses uh, 8 through 20, uh, again, familiar passages of the Scripture, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, For I bring you good tidings, or good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So the second action that we should do as a family who wants to display the wonder of Jesus in our homes and in our communities is to experience the wonder. So we ask the question here, what did the shepherds experience? Well, we're never going to see this uh, account reenacted again, but I think we can learn some truths that apply to us from this, these shepherds' encounter. First is this, there was a divine confrontation. Right? The angel of the Lord came to the shepherd and said, Hey, listen up. I've got some good news for you. Next, there was a personal message. Look in verse 10. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring who? You. This message, even though it was going to be told to the whole world, it meant something to them as well. There was a divine confrontation. There was a personal message. And in verse 15, we see a change in priority. They went from having to watch the sheep. We must go and see this thing which has come to pass. And they didn't do it lackadaisically. If you're taking notes, I don't know how to spell that. They didn't do it lazily. I can spell that. But they did it with haste, not paste. They did it with haste. There was a sense of urgency we see in verse 16. Because in verses 16 through 20, we see a life changing encounter. They experienced the wonder of Christmas. They didn't just hear about it. They didn't just know about it, but they saw the babe lying in the manger, and they recognized that this was the one who had been promised to them for years and years and years. So what about you? Maybe you've been around a lot of Christmases, or maybe this is the first Christmas or second Christmas that you can remember, whether you're a boy and girl or a grandma and grandpa or anywhere in between. I have to ask you this tonight. Have you heard from heaven? Have you seen your personal need for a Savior that needs to redeem you from your sins? What commands your attention when it comes to this Savior of the world? What's your mindset? And are you any different as a result of hearing uh, from heaven what God has to say about the Savior of the world? Here's the second truth that comes with displaying the wonder of Christmas, and it's this. The wonder of Christmas becomes personal when we experience salvation through Jesus. Not just knowing about him, but having a place in time in our life, a place where we can go and draw a circle on the ground where we were when we say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I accept the need of a Savior, and his name is Jesus. The first action is to understand the wonder. The second action is to experience the wonder. And again, in these verses, we also, as families that believe in the name of Jesus, that believe that he is the Savior and the reason for Christmas, we should celebrate the wonder. Celebrate the wonder. And I want to ask you a simple question. Why should we celebrate Jesus' birthday? Why? Uh, What's the big deal? There's a lot of important people that have been born. Why should we celebrate Jesus' birthday? Here's the best reason I can give you. Because God did. Right? God, yes, he came to some lowly shepherds on the side of the hill. But listen to what verse 10 says. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good, what? Tidings or good news. I can't help but tell you what's going on. My son's been born. How many of you have ever been excited when your children have been born? You go back to work the next day and you show off pictures and you do all kinds of things. You get a new bike for Christmas, boys and girls, and you want everybody to know about it. So you ride it up and down the street. I guess you don't do that now. Now you tweet it to your peeps, right? Is that how it works? You know? Uh, But the point is this. You want everybody to know the good news. Guess what? God wanted everybody to know the good news about Jesus. And he wanted everybody to rejoice just like he did. So much so that look at verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel, the angel that gave the good tidings of great joy, there was with this angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Man, the heavenly choir came down to announce Jesus' birth. If God celebrated Jesus' birthday, shouldn't we do it the right way too? 
Not only because God celebrated his birthday, but because of what this birth means. It means that God kept his promise. It means that every human being has the hope we sang about even tonight. It means, like you heard the choir sing this morning, Christmas changes everything. These people, like Isaiah said, who were once in darkness, who walked in darkness, have now been given light. You and I have been given light. For what? So that we can genuinely celebrate and, and, and rejoice in the fact that a Savior has been born. So I ask you this question tonight. Do you genuinely celebrate Christmas? See, it's hard to celebrate someone that has no personal impact on your life. Oh, we can get caught up in all the trappings. We can get caught up in all the the, the commercialization. And we can wrap our tree with garland and toss tinsel on our tree. But that doesn't mean we're celebrating Christmas the way God intended us to. Do you have a genuine personal relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's also hard to celebrate someone else when your life is focused on yourself. You know, uh, Christmas is a great reminder that uh, it's fun to give gifts to those you love, right? I, I, my son even said it earlier this week, my oldest, he's like, it's fun to get, more fun to give than to get now, and now that I'm older, you know. That's true, isn't it? It is exciting to give. But if your focus is yourself, if you're and your own, you and your own goals drive your life decision, it's really hard to celebrate Christmas the way God intended us to. And it's hard to celebrate someone whose goals are not in line with your goals. So let me ask you this question. What do you value? What is the most important thing in your life? Because here's the truth. The wonder of Christmas motivates us to celebrate the change that comes from Jesus. If you've been changed, you can't help but celebrate it. And here's the last action. Not only should we understand the wonder, experience the wonder, and celebrate the wonder, but we should share the wonder. In verses 17 and 18, these shepherds couldn't help but go and tell people what they heard and what they've seen. And what does this look like? First, it begins with personal change. Once you've been changed... You are a new creature, right? The Bible teaches us that. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You have a story to tell, a song in your heart. Which leads us to the second truth, that it doesn't require prior experience. You don't have to be a trained professional in the art of public speaking in order to tell people that Jesus changed your life. In fact, the Bible very clearly teaches us later on in those verses, we all know 2 Corinthians 5, 17 very well. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. But verse 20 says we've been given that we are now ambassadors of Christ and we've been given a ministry of reconciliation. We are representatives of this babe who was born in a manger, who is the Savior of the world. Also, sharing the wonder has no limitations or boundaries. The gospel is for everyone. Rich, poor, black, white, purple, pink, tall, short, English, Spanish, Colombian. It doesn't matter who they are and where they live or what their social status is. The gospel is for everyone. There are no limitations or boundaries in the the giver of the truth or in the receiver of the truth. In fact, it focuses on truth. Because apart from God's word, apart from the wonder of Christmas, we have no hope. But with the message of Christmas, we've got a story to tell, a song to sing, a party to celebrate, and an experience to share. And here's the last truth. And look at what verse 20 says again. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Verse 18, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. You know what sharing the wonder of Christmas does? It impacts everyone around you. Sharing the wonder of Christmas impacts a culture, changes families, changes lives. So let me ask you this question. How willing are you to share the truth of Jesus? Think of all of the stuff we are so quick to share 
you go to anybody's Facebook page or anybody, whatever it's called, the feed or the line or whatever, uh, the ticker, whatever you call that thing, and you'll find out what people had for breakfast. You'll find out what kind of socks you wear. You'll find out, you know, what was in your uh, dryer last night when you empty. You'll find out all kinds of stuff. But we've got the greatest message to share, that Jesus was born and lived and died and rose again so we can have eternal life. There is nothing better to share than that. Here's the truth. If we really have the wonder of Christmas like God tells us we should, genuine awe demands an external response. If we are truly in awe of the Savior of the world, we can't help but share it with people. The wonder of Christmas empowers us to boldly share the truth about Jesus. So I ask you tonight, are you in awe of Christmas for the right reasons? I'm not asking if you go and stand in the parking lot of Bass Pro and drool because of how beautiful their lights are. They are amazing, aren't they? But they're not anywhere close to the light of the world. I'm not asking you if you have a feast at your table planned for Christmas Day. That's nothing in comparison to the feast that God has planned for those that love him. I'm not asking if the tree uh, at your house is barren like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree and nothing underneath it, or if you got so many presents you can't even get to the tree. I'm telling you the Bible says that God will bless us with rewards for loving him far beyond what our hearts and minds can comprehend. Maybe you're here tonight, and Christmas isn't that awesome to you. The wonder of Christmas has diminished or has faded in your life. Maybe it's never been that much of a big deal to you. What do I do, Brother Jason? What do I do to have this wonder of Christmas? Well, the answer is found in one of these three questions I want to give you. First, do you need to accept him as Savior? Are you listening tonight online or are you in this sanctuary tonight and you know that you are lost? You don't need six verses of a hymn. You don't need to grab that, that, that chair in front of you any tighter. You just need to let Jesus save your soul. Amen. That would be the most wonderful thing that could happen this Christmas. Maybe you need your all refreshed tonight. What a great time to start. Let God refresh your all. And maybe, just maybe, you need to share your all with others. Maybe you've been selfish with the wonder of Christmas. And maybe you need to tell others about that baby who was born in a manger, who lived and died and rose again so that you know that you have hope and maybe they need hope too. Maybe you just need to ask God to help you share the wonder of Christmas this year. Whatever it is, God wants to do it and change your heart for today, for tomorrow, and for eternity. Pastor.